Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes, the Tuesday edition for Bible Tract Echoes, and we give every single one of our Tuesday broadcast a title. It's the same title each and every Tuesday. We call it Tract and Truth Tuesday. Tract, T-R-A-C-T, is a reference to a Bible track, a gospel track, as an evangelism tool. The word truth refers to the fact that we're dealing with gospel truth, the truth that will make a difference on the eternal destination of those who hear and receive it. And obviously, it's Tuesday, so it's Tract and Truth Tuesday. You may not realize this, but I do give a title to every one of our broadcasts. I don't tell you what it is. You can find it on our website, but I give a title to every one of our broadcasts, and they're all different except for Tuesday, because on our Tuesday broadcast, we set aside our Bible study, and right in recent days, we're going through the book of Second Peter. We set our Bible study aside to just focus on using tracts, becoming a more effective gospel witness, just aiding ourselves in fulfilling the call of Jesus Christ to go into the, all the world and preach the gospel to every person. We can't give a gospel tract to the wrong person because all need the gospel. Right now, my Bible sits open to the book of Matthew chapter 5. If you know much about Matthew, the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 5 is the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount. It opens with those famous Beatitudes, and then right after that, Jesus gives a, well, a warning to those that he's meeting with. We'll say more about that here in just a moment. I've got a gospel story to share. Now, I don't make a whole lot of commercials here about the overall ministry. Let me just take a moment just to say this, that we have a, a number of focuses here. Number one, and by overwhelming demand, this is our main goal. We print gospel tracts. We give them away all over the world. We pay for the shipping. We pay for the tracts and so on. And people like you come alongside and help support us like a missionary. And that's what enables us to do that. So number one, and by leaps and bounds, the most important thing we do is the gospel track ministry. Secondly, we do radio like today, and I hope you listen each and every day. A third thing we do that I do as the director, I travel and speak in churches. I speak in camps. I speak in men's meetings. I speak in missions conference. I speak in evangelistic meetings. Yes, I do. I hold evangelistic meetings, and I preach in Bible conferences, all that to help local churches. A fourth thing we do is that I go to churches and teach about how to do gospel work, how a local church and how an individual believer can be a better, more effective gospel teller. I share key steps on starting to become a gospel witness. I share key ways to use tracks in your personal outreach life day by day. Now, all this is said to make this one point. BTI, Bible Tracks Incorporated, wants to help local churches and individual believers have a solid gospel ministry right where God has placed and planted them. If we can be of help to your church in any way, please contact us. We love the local church. It is God's plan for this era. That's why we exist to help local churches do gospel work. I have one of our gospel tracts in my hand. And again, a gospel tract is just simply a written presentation of God's plan of salvation. This one's entitled, The Best I 
can, the best I can. I rarely read a track. Let me read a good part of this. I like this track. It's one of my favorite tracks. Do you know why? Well, let me tell you. There's five reasons why this track, the best I can, is one of my favorites. Reason number one, it is so simple. Reason number two, the print size is a little a little bigger. Reason number three, this track is so simple. Reason number four, the gospel illustration is so very clear. And then reason number five, can you guess what it is? This track is so simple. It's entitled The Best I Can. Let me tell you how the track begins. It says this, a man standing by New York Harbor suddenly declares, I'm going to swim to London. Then he plunges into the water, heading for open sea. You shout to him, hey, you won't get to London that way. Oh, yes, I will. I'm sure I'll make it. And you say to him, what makes you so certain? He says, I'm doing the best I can. Well, friend, he probably is doing the best, but 3,000 miles of chilling waters, deep rolling seas, fierce winds, angry storms, and a few thousand vicious sharks make it rather impossible for him to reach England by swimming. But then a wealthy man witnessing the whole scene offers to freely give the swimmer a plane ticket to London. He can board the jet plane, relax, and enjoy the trip. There is now no need for him to strive to reach his destination by vain efforts. At this point in the track, we shift from the story to the reader. Here's what it says. Are you sincerely saying, I'm doing the best I can to get to heaven? It's written in the Bible, there is none righteous, no, not one, and all have sinned. Suppose you are doing your best. That is not enough. God says all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. Only God's grace and mercy saves us. Titus 3, 5 says, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saves us. Friend, there is just one way to heaven, the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I'm the way. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. He died for sinners at Calvary, rose again, and is now alive in a real glorified body of flesh and bone, exalted at God's right hand. Your part is to receive the Lord as your Savior. Could the swimmer make it to London by doing his best? No, his intentions are hopeless, and your best is not good enough to gain entrance into heaven either. But like the wealthy man who bought the plane ticket, so Jesus Christ purchased salvation for us, paid with his precious blood. And at that moment in the track, there's an appeal made to the person to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. It's simple. Did I tell you it's simple? I use it all the time because I think the simpler the gospel is made, the more effective it is. Get this track, Romans, please. At the end of the broadcast, my announcer will make our contact information known. If you'll give us your name and mailing address, we'll send you a free sample packet containing one each of all of our over 40 tracks, including this one, the best I can. You can go to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org. Matthew chapter 5 says this, beginning at verse 13. Jesus is speaking to those uh, around him. He said, ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is henceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Along the lights of letting your light shine, I came across this story here some time ago. The story goes like this. I once read about a woman who felt very much alone in her workplace because she was the only Christian. She was often ridiculed for her faith and accused of being narrow-minded. Finally, she became so discouraged that she considered quitting her job. Before doing that, however, she talked with her pastor. After listening to her story, the minister said, "'Lady, where do people usually put lights?' Immediately, she responded, "'In dark places.'" And immediately as well, she recognized that her place of work was indeed a dark place where light was vitally needed. So she decided to stay where she was and become a stronger influence for Christ. 
It wasn't just a few months before a number of her employee friends, 13 of them, in fact, came to know Christ as Savior. I love stories like that, don't you? You and I can be lights. Along that line, if you have a piece of paper and pen handy, would you consider writing down three words beginning with the letter R to help me tell what's here in Matthew chapter 5, 13 to 16. The first R is this. That's the word role, R-O-L-E. You and I who know Christ have a role to play. Our lives are to make men thirsty because we're salt, and our life is to give light unto men so that all in the house, all that are within our sphere of influence can see Christ. That's our role. That's our purpose. My second R word is robbery. Friend, are you, as a believer, robbing people? You say, Brother Mark, I've never stolen anything in my life. Well, Jesus here is talking about his followers who are letting their their saltiness get lost. They lose their saltiness. He talks about their light being hid. If you and I lose our saltiness, we're robbing the lost around us of the opportunity to develop a thirst. The Holy Spirit takes our life our commitment to Christ to love others and to be faithful to him and giving the gospel to to develop a thirst in the lives of lost people. God takes our life to be a light, and then we are, by that light, giving truth to people. But if we hide our light, if we lose our saltiness, we're robbing the lost around us. My third R is the word responsibility. Let me read verse 16 again. Here's our responsibility, not by Mark Smith, but given by Christ. Let your light. You have a light if you know Christ. I have a light. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Can you and I find believers that are living, well, carnal, fleshly lives? Yeah, we can. Can you and I find believers that are leading hypocritical lives? Yes, we can. Do you and I know believers who have lost their saltiness and are hiding their light? Yes, we can. But we're not interested in them. Jesus says, you just take care of you and your light. Let you let your light shine before men. That's our responsibility. It's been assigned by Jesus Christ. I want to help you carry out that responsibility. I want to help you let your light shine. I want to help you make people thirsty and give them light. You'll never guess how I want to do that. I want to put gospel tracts in your hand. I want to give you some evangelism tools. Get the sample packet from us. My announcer is about ready to give our contact information. Get the sample packet from us. Read the tracks. You're going to find some that you're going to love and some that you maybe don't like as much. Fine. Use the tracks that you like. Get more from us and let your light so shine before men. Let your love of lost people so shine before men. Let the light of the gospel so shine through you, your mouth, through your deeds, that men glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Friend, our job, our assignment is to let our light shine. Let's go and do what's been assigned to us. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309 828 6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois 61702. Again, our phone number is 309 828 6888, and our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.